but whenever someone put on a costume is is very different. When I shoot models, I get to choose their you know their clothing. I get to you know talk to my makeup artist to decide how I want to shoot. You know, however, if you tell me I am shooting you know this costume, and then next thing you know, if I didn't know ahead of time, I might get thrown off. Sometimes, for example, uh, shooting. The difference between something of LED light or something in a complete armor would be very different because they both reflect light very differently. But to say it's more difficult doesn't mean it's a better form of art or not. It's, it's just more difficult, it's more challenging. Uh, you know, as well as landscape photography, you know, those things are also very challenging. So it's different kind of challenges, but cosplay definitely has its own. Unfortunately right now is that cosplay is not being seen as, as a professional form of photography, at least maybe not yet. Uh, I, I see that it could be. It's just that we, this is a relatively new form of photography, a relatively new form of community. I, I think it has, and it has been already changing, uh, you know, because a little bit of history about cosplay photography. Lots of people just bring a camera, a film camera, or even disposable camera, and what they trade is not email, they trade actual physical address, and people go home, develop them, and send them physical copy uh, of those photos. Now, of course, with digital, digital age, it's so much easier, but I am seeing that and we're already doing this, is bringing cosplay even away from convention. You know, like recently, uh, Jessica and I, you know, went to Colorado, and we've been to Hawaii to shoot before, uh, and of course, Mo Mac came over here to shoot. We were doing a bigger project because, as you said, people are doing Patreon. There's more people who are involved in this, which is great, because, you know, the more people involved in this, uh, the more people actually care about this community, it will grow better. But cosplay are actually willing to do to take bigger risk, you know, bigger risk like, all right, let's plan a trip. Because you know, all this stuff costs money. But if there's people who are supporting it, then they're like, all right, let's just bring this you know to a whole new level where we have time to plan our um uh, our photo shoot, where we plan about what costume, we plan about where to shoot, what to make, all, all those different stuff, all this coordination, and that's you know, all thanks to the people. They they're thinking smarter, you know, they're not just they're thinking more than just cosplaying. You know, they're thinking about how to make this a bigger brand, how to make people more, you know, recognizable of this. And, you know, Yaya, you know, good friend of mine, she, she does a great job. But not only that, she's a great, you know, uh, businesswoman. She knows how to uh, help the community out by, you know, getting the word out there. As you can see, she was on a TV show. She has her own, you know, fabric line in Joanne, a major retail chain. There, there's a lot that we're doing just to get people more recognizable and these top cosplayers are actually helping us to get that happen. Just like any form of art, if you want it to be a major serious art, you want people to consider it professionally, there got to be some form of you know money involved. I mean, even if you love doing dancing, you want professional dancing, you still have to sell tickets to watch a show. If you're a painter, you want to sell your painting to sustain you know, what you're doing. And having people as a live example of showing this is a viable, you know, uh, you know, job or some kind of some form of income, it makes more people want to join this community, and it would actually just make us bigger, which is great. Mm -hmm.